Hi, everyone. Hello, everybody. All right, shall we? Yeah, let's get started. Um, so I'm thrilled to be here. Well, not here in my apartment, here uh, virtually at the 10-year 10, um, 10 anniversary of the Open Hardware Summit with Alicia. And uh, my name is Aya. I, um, like Michael said, I'm one of the co-founders of the Open Hardware Summit. 10 years ago, at the time when I started, I was um, a fellow at Creative Commons, which kind of got me started in this journey. Alicia? And I am Alicia Gibb, and I am the Executive Director of the Open Source Hardware Association. All right, so we thought for the welcome today, we would give you a little bit of a snapshot of how this all got started. Uh, some of the um, uh, kind of accidents that we fell on, uh, the uh, milestones that kind of gave birth to the Open Hardware Summit, uh, to the Open Hardware Association, and um, that really uh, marked this this movement um, and kind of leading us to today. So let's jump right in. All right. Um, so in uh, 2009, um, I was a fellow at iBeam. Alicia was um, working at Bug Labs, uh, the modular hardware uh, company in New York City. Um, and, and there were pockets of people all around the world that were starting to dabble in open source hardware, but doing it kind of in disparate ways. Um, and um, I became a fellow uh, as well at Creative Commons. Um, and their uh, kind of mandate to me was how would uh, open source apply to hardware? In the case of software, a lot of the questions are resolved in, in uh, uh, examples of how to duplicate hard software, how to distribute it, uh, how to credit, all these things were resolved. But in the case of hardware, there was a lot of things to figure out still. Um, and I pitched this idea to Creative Commons. They were very interested in supporting it. And so um, uh, Tang and Green that you see here and John Wilbanks were the supporters from Creative Commons that I was working with privately, as well as Selena Saf, who you also see all the way on the left, um, who was um, a counsel at the time, a legal counsel. Um, but um, I decided that this was a conversation that maybe other people were interested in having. Uh, and so IBEAM was very generous in hosting uh, the opening hardware workshop. The opening hardware workshop was a collection of about 20 people, everybody that you see here in, in, on the screen, uh, that we brought together for a one-day event, super informal. It was just a work session to work through what does open hardware mean, what are the different aspects of the field that we have to look at, and what are, how do we start to bring this community together. So as you see, Alicia's right there next to me, as well as you see some familiar faces, Tom Igo, Lamore, um, you see many people, Ted, uh, uh, Phil is in the back, Bunny Wong is in the back. Uh, many people that are really key players in the open hardware movement are uh, were there. It was a really fun event. Uh, this is a snapshot of our program. Uh, we basically um, started thinking about the first um, bucket of thoughts were about IP, um, how do we learn from open source and apply it to hardware? Uh, we uh, led an exercise to think about what are the first steps in starting to coalesce this into a movement and making it a little bit more formal when people call something open hardware um, and, and essentially created a mailing list and a forum and it was just a, a conversation starter. Um, this is a snapshot of who was there. I think um, you guys can see all this stuff. Um, uh, uh, Adafruit just tweeted this program a few days ago, so you can see everybody's bios, um, and you can see everybody has aged beautifully. Um, one of the first things that we tackled is what is what does open source hardware mean? Uh, and we tried to settle on some kind of uh, principles um, that uh, that we could really all agree on, uh, no, no non-commercial terms because you have to uh, be able to pay for hardware when you make it, uh, freedom to release improvements, freedom to distribute design, etc. These were some of the ideas um, that were drawn up. Very quickly, that um, kind of uh, uh, inspired us to come up with something called the Open um, Source Hardware Statement of Principles. Uh, so we started a wiki. Um, like I said, it was a dozen or a couple dozen of us in the beginning, and we started drafting in a wiki. Um, Wendell Oske was one of the very active people uh, in the program, as well as some people from the Free Software Foundation were also helping us a lot. And um, 
we started to discuss um, what are some elements for the principles and for the open hardware definition, and it started taking shape over the next weeks and months after. Um, the big thing that we all agreed on um, is that we were not going to go for what everybody wanted as an ideal, but instead we were uh, going to look at what we could live with uh, so that we could really um, uh, get to something that everybody could stand behind. Um, in, um, I actually forget exactly the date, but um, the uh, later that year, we released the Open Hardware Definition 1.0. Uh, Make announced it. They were really on top of helping us announce everything that was coming out of that time. And, and what we asked, uh, we kind of launched to the community and we said, if you believe it, if you agree with it, endorse it, put your name down, um, start referring to it when you create open hardware, link to it, uh, so that it becomes uh, the, the thing that everybody um, sort of agrees on. Shortly after, um, Alicia and I uh, were discussing and we realized, you know, any um, uh, such movement needs a brand. A brand starts with a logo. Uh, and so we decided to launch a competition for the open source hardware logo. And uh, we put very three very simple criteria. It needs to be easy to print and see on a PCB. It needs to be easy to see on a schematic document. And it needs to signify openness. And so we opened this process and everybody uh, started submitting uh, logos. And we got, I think, over 160 different logos uh, submitted. Uh, some uh, are pretty out there. Uh, this is kind of an Escher-like uh, logo. This is, imagine that logo kind of living on every PCB. Some of them are quite funny. I hope nobody in the audience, I hope uh, some of you that created these are in the audience and, um, and have a smile on your faces when you see this nostalgic moment. Uh, some of them were, you know, nuts and bolts, um, riffs of um, different kind of graphics from the open hardware world. Some were kind of more funny or more, you know, drawing from electrical diagrams. And basically what we did is we created a pre-selection committee of 10 people um, that were part of the opening hardware workshop and also really engaged in creating the definition to narrow down the list of 160 logos into the 10 uh, top ones. Uh, 129 logos, actually, it says right here. Um, we, we picked the top uh, 10 uh, logos and then opened it up to a public poll. Uh, so uh, we... we Put this up and people were uh, free to uh, go in and vote for the logos that they uh, liked uh, these are this is the selection that you see here some of them with execution some of them are just high level ideas you recognize our final logo right here um, of course as with any uh, such situation drama occurred uh, we had a very serious fraud situation uh, and very active uh, members of the community that were investigating uh, this fraud situation. Turns out some people were creating little bots to vote. Um, they were voting multiple times. They were clearing their cookies. And so after a very, invest very tough investigative journalism process, uh, we shut that down and were able to come up with the logo that won, which, oops, uh, that picture is missing. You, got, you guys all know the logo that won. Um, shortly after, it started showing up in all sorts of executions, 3D prints, showed up on PCBs, showed up as stickers, um, and then uh, the first uh, uh, kind of uh, open hardware badge for the Open Hardware Summit. So this was 2011, so a bit after, uh, but it was our first kind of white PCB uh, fancy badge that uh, that we were very excited to have. Um, these are some pictures from the new, from the um, from the Open Hardware Summit at the New York Hall of Science uh, Maker Fair. Uh, Dale and Maker Fair team were very generous in allowing us to uh, uh, use the space at the New York Hall of Science the day before, and we hosted an incredible event. Alicia and I thought that maybe we would get 20, 30 people to show up. Over 300 people showed up. The room was packed. Um, everybody was super excited to be there, and it was really a moment that I remember very well being a pivotal moment in, in the movement where I felt like something really big was happening in that room. We had our first swag bag um, that's become obviously a super uh, famous piece of the summit that you guys were all, uh, you all will be receiving. Um, and then these are some snapshots of the day um, uh, where we had Lamore was um, our opening speaker, um, you know, snapshots of the room. 
And then, of course, uh, as any um, uh, fun, fancy uh, New York event, we had a step and repeat. So um, you can see some of our um, crazy community members step and repeat. In this picture, you see uh, Gianluca from Arduino who couldn't make it, but we made a giant cutout of it. Uh, the Bug Labs or the Resistor team, I think, uh, made this, and he was drinking and eating and over consuming <laughs> all over the summit. Um, this was the team that put together the Open Hardware Summit um, and really helped us in the very early days. We're very, very grateful to all of them. Um, I only uh, chaired the first couple of summits with Alicia and then uh, stepped back when I started a little bit as a company, uh, but have been watching from afar uh, and been incredibly um, uh, sort of happy to see how strong the summit has been, how strong the community has been, and how strong the movement has become. The logos on hundreds and hundreds of millions of PCBs all over the world. Um, the, uh, the, this process led to the Stern Open Hardware definition, and just recently a, a new one that Alicia will talk about. Uh, and this has just been an incredible moment in history that I'm very, very proud to have been part of, and I'm really grateful to be here for the 10 years. So over to you, Alicia. Thank you, Aya. Yeah, I have to say it's a great uh, thing that you put that picture of the cardboard cutout in because as we were figuring out who could and couldn't come to this and playing with this whole notion of creating a virtual summit, we were going to have to make like 300 cardboard cutouts for the audience and 50 <laughs> cardboard cutouts for the speakers. <laughs> anyway, but then we just decided, you know, to have everything virtual. It's more uh, more earth friendly for the trees and whatnot. <laughs> so um, I just kind of want to continue the trip down memory lane. Um, so in 2012, we started the Open Source Hardware Association as a nonprofit, and we got our nonprofit status in 2013. Um, there was a book that came out. Um, it took two years of convincing um, from this publisher that I was the right person to write a book about building open source hardware. Um, and I had some imposter syndrome about that. Um, but what I did is I, um, I involved people from the community that you all know and love. Um, to write different chapters of this book because I thought in the the sense of open sourceness and um, sort of an egalitarian community, that would be the best way to, to write a book on the topic. Um, and then um, in uh, uh, 2013, um, we put out the um, sort of this, the feelers and the starting of this concept of a certification process. And we didn't know exactly what it would be like at first. There was all kinds of different um, thoughts on like, would it be like a laundry label or would it be like a, the USB certification or would it be somewhere in between? Um, and so we we did a lot of research in the community and um, then we brought on Michael Weinberg as our Oshawa board president and he really took this idea forward and it's super exciting. We launched the um, the, cert the, the, uh, the certification um, just a couple years ago. And we've already gotten uh, 250 people certifying their hardware as open source hardware. Um, so that's super exciting. Um, we also announced that October would be open hardware month last year. Um, and we can we will continue to do that again this year. So um, hopefully this uh, hopefully we'll, we will be able to meet in person in our little pockets in our communities in October this year. And we won't all have to be on virtual <laughs> hangouts. Um, so that's what Asha has been up to the past couple of years. And of course, we've um, continued to run the Open Hardware Summit. And so this is the 10 year uh, anniversary of the Open Hardware Summit, which makes it very um, unfortunate that we all can't be together, but this is uh, this is kind of the best that we've got. So I'm glad that everybody is here virtually. And I actually think that we are allowing more people to, um, to participate this year because we can do it virtually. And so it doesn't have to just be however many chairs we have in the room. Um, so if you um, are in one of these photos or remember the venue from one of these photos, you can just like give a little clap on, um, on Discord or on Twitter. <laughs> um, but here's just a few of a few pictures um, from our past summits that we've had. Rome, MIT. Uh, this one, of course, we did in a church in Philly so we could all make jokes about open source hardware being a religion. Um, this is... Um, Addy Wagon Connect, who uh, has run um, six out of the 10 open hardware summits. And I just want to shout out to her. Thank you so much for being on board all those years, Addy. Um, so again, if you see yourself, give yourself a clap. I also stuck a, a cardboard cutout. We did the second year, we did a cardboard cutout of Bunny, who was um, had 
had been on the list to speak and wasn't able to make it. And so um, we've had a long history of cardboard cutouts. <clears throat> um, there was one year where the AV didn't work and so Bilal wrapped for us. That was pretty epic. And this was um, a really great shot from uh, the 2011 summit of every single person who was, who was there. We just had them all come out into the street and take a photo. Um, so those were um, the summits. And um, as Aya mentioned, we there is kind of a really nice, exciting um, uh, event that has happened um, within this 10 years. Um, so CERN created an open hardware license. They're not the only ones who created open source hardware license. Um, there's a couple other open hardware licenses out there. Um, but CERN just updated to version 2.0 um, uh, yesterday. So. We're super excited to hear that. Um, all of this lets us know that the community is moving forward and that we are, um, we're, we're clearly uh, part of a movement and we're going in the right direction. Um, I wanna just give a thank you to all of our speakers. Um, we've got um, actually three visionary speakers, SparkFun, Google and the Engelberg Center. Um, for every sponsor that we've got, we really couldn't do this without you. Um, this, you know, supplies our funding for um, not only, you know, when it's physical, the space and all that, but also for the staff to run the event um, and for the, you know, craziness that it is switching your event from a um, physical event to a virtual event. So thank you, thank you, thank you to all of our sponsors. We couldn't do this without you. We appreciate you so much. Um, and then there's um, some important links that I want to make sure everybody knows about. So there's a Discord server for Q&A discussions today. Um, these links are on the 2020 Oshawa website. So you can just go to the Open Hardware Summit 2020 page and um, you can get all of these links here. Um, the hashtag that we're using for Twitter is OHS 2020 virtual. Uh, the sign up for email updates um, is has a link on our um, 2020.oshawa.org webpage. Um, we are also hosting um, a survey this year. It is, if you've taken it before, it'll look very familiar. It is um, basically the 2012-2013 survey um, done again for 2020. We just kind of want to get another snapshot of where the community is in that survey. And um, we've opened 2021 tickets already. So you can go get your tickets for the next Hardware Summit, um, which we hopefully will be having in person. <laughs> And then just a reminder, our code of conduct that always applies at the summit applies here as well. Um, so be nice, even though we can't see your face. Um, be nice in the um, Discord channel, on the Twitter channels, um, anywhere that you are representing this conference, uh, the code of conduct applies. And with that, um, thank you so much. And I'm excited that uh, we have Sophie Kravitz as our keynote speaker today.